Hello everyone and be welcome to my YouTube channel Vitor Pordeus. We thank your interest and we ask for you to uh, sign and subscribe to the channel and also uh, watch our movies and share our movies. So I'm here to talk about uh, the event, a very important event that we had uh, in Jamaica that happened in Kingston, Jamaica late, last February where I had the opportunity to share uh, the stage of uh, international mental health and transcultural psychiatry and uh, with key figures of contemporary psychiatry today like Professor Lawrence Kiermaier that unfortunately could not come to the event but uh, also with Professor Frederick Hickling Professor Jason Guzder, Professor uh, Patricia Newton from United States, Professor Ted Lowe from Toronto, Canada. We, we had a very rich meeting with the team of, of, of Fred Hickling, with Geoffrey Walcott and Debbie Ann Chambers, also Nicole de Souza uh, from McGill University from Montreal, also Sophia Kukui, a very uh, interesting group in transcultural and social psychiatry. And uh, I think we had a, a, a significant encounter of two different generations of, of therapists, of psychiatrists, of cultural and social psychiatrists from different countries. And I had the opportunity to uh, represent Brazil and uh, bring some talk and some reflection on uh, what is the tradition of mental health and the tradition of transcultural psychiatry in Brazil. I started bringing this image from my national group in the, in the last meeting we had, telling them that we Brazilians are uh, very connected to nature and that we have uh, a lot of rituals that connect us to nature because of our indigenous blood, because of our uh, African blood. And uh, I thought that me being an indigenous Brazilian from the shore, from Rio de Janeiro, I would be, uh, I would bring some contribution for for the for the Jamaicans, which are the Africans from the Caribbean, and 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 what would uh, we exchange as learning? And I remembered this phrase from Brazilian uh, visual arts uh, history only anthropophagy unites us. A Brazilian transcultural psychiatry from Nisa da Silveira to the Madness Hotel. And I started telling to the uh, Jamaican audience and also an international audience uh, in Kingston the, the story of the Bishop uh, Dom Pedro Fernandes Sardinha, who was the first bishop of Brazil. He was the highest Catholic authority in the country. And in 1556, in the shore of Alagoas, uh, the first bishop of Brazil, Dom Pedro Sardinha, is captured and devoured in an anthropophagic ritual by the Caeté indigenous people. It was a tragedy. Uh, actually, uh, he was, there was a shipwreck and he was captured along his uh, whole comedy and they uh, were uh, de devoured in, in a religious anthropophagic ritual. The Brazilian poet Oswald de Andrade from Sao Paulo, he uh, got an insight from this historical fact that uh, the anthropophagy could work as a pedagogical poetic metaphor for the development of critical thinking and original identity, yet to be founded in Brazil. It demands courage to be original. So we have been reflecting on this, that we have to uh, understand and encounter our cultural roots, our cultural matrices, in order to perform an efficient medicine, in order to perform an efficient mental health promotion and, and community mental health promotion, groups, development of groups and, and collectivities. And this got to do for sure with our indigenous root. So the poet Oswald de Andrade, he asks to pee or not to pee? That is the question. Né? So 
and out of that, out of uh, uh, the early modernist Brazilian movement, it came, it stemmed a lot of interesting people, a lot of interesting artists and scientists and researchers. Among them were uh, Mario de Andrade, Tarsila da Amaral, which is this painter, and also the psychiatrist uh, Osório Cesar, Osório Talmaturgo Cesar, that we're going to speak in a, in a short while. I'll, I'll talk more detailedly about him. Uh, another anthropophagic reference for us is this uh, Brazilian Portuguese pedagogist José Pacheco, who was my supervisor in the Madness Hotel. He, he, we worked together uh, the seven years we were doing the, the project in the, in the public asylum here in Rio. And he has this phrase that has been published just recently, when he says, we understand that learning is anthropophagic, we don't learn what the other says. We learn the other. And the teacher does not teach what he says. He transmits what he is. So this got to do with what I think is a Brazilian tradition of uh, uh, remarkable uh, psychiatry and healing and, and medicine. And, and that's what we're going to show here with this idea of Brazilian pioneers in social and cross-cultural psychiatry, which seems to be a public emergency demand in, in, in the current mental health crisis that we are facing worldwide just now. So we, we call attention to this idea of epistemo ontologies from the South. In other words, the South, the people from the South have their own way of knowing and their own way of, of being. So this idea that uh, if we understand the way of being and the way of knowing, we may generate a more adequate and more culturally pertinent medicine and psychiatry, not harming and not uh, destroying indigenous cultures in order to be practiced. The first in, uh, psychiatrical matrix that we must consider when we talk about Brazil is the huge matrix of the indigenous medicine and the psychiatry that the indigenous peoples have by themselves. They had always developed uh, systems of healing, systems of psychic healing, of mental health promotion, collective work, collective rituals, mythologies, cosmogonies, the whole, uh, the whole uh, civilizatory apparatus, singing, dancing, uh, poetry, declamation, uh, images, uh, complex uh, hierarchical systems, highly organized and differentiated cultures. So this is a very important uh, issue that we must learn that the indigenous peoples from Americas and in Brazil is, is absolutely the same. They were here for 40,000 years before. There, there are very uh, disturbing evidences in Piauí, in, in the Serra da Capivara, that may suggest that uh, the colonization may have started as early as 40,000 years ago. And also, we have the primeval peoples from Africa that has been uh, kidnapped through slavery and brought to Brazil, and also they brought a medicine, and they brought a philosophy, and they brought a vision of the world, and a psychiatry, and that's a major influence in our people, in our popular classes, in our communities, in the, in the, in the peripheries of, of the big cities in, in Brazil, in the, in the in alternative cultures and, and communities, marginalized communities. So it's a very, very powerful influence. And besides the indigenous and besides this powerful African and Afro-Brazilian medicine, we still have a very significant um, scientific tradition in psychiatry. And, 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 and not less surprising, the first major psychiatrist that uh, opened several institutions, has worked in Europe, has worked uh, with the most famous psychiatrist of his time, was a black man uh, from, from Bahia, from, from Salvador, a poor boy from, from Salvador, Bahia, that had a godfather who was a physician, and this godfather provided that he became a physician in the end of the 19th century, and then he became one, Juliano Moreira, Dr. Juliano Moreira, and he, we have several uh, major and most important uh, psychiatric hospitals in Brazil carry his name, and very few of the Brazilians and very few of the black Brazilians know that Brazilian psychiatry has been founded 
by a black guy, a poor guy from a poor origin, that um, fought several fights in order to denounce racism in Madison, in order to defend spiritual and performatic uh, uh, possessions, demonic possessions, that are very common and very uh, popular in Brazil, uh, in the Afro-Afro-Brazilian cults, in the communities. So he was really a pioneer. Another pioneer was Dr. Ulysses Pernambucano, who was really a, a, a key leader in the field of social and cultural psychiatry, and he uh, proposed a, a, a serious strategies for mental health promotion in schools, involving educations and children, and telling people that we are educating society for madness when we do not acknowledge the necessity of uh, not uh, promoting the use of alcohol and the use of psychotropic drugs uh, as we promote it and, and all that. So he was a very, very early pioneer of Brazilian social and cultural psychiatry. So here comes the first big experience in Brazil involving the arts and cultural and social psychiatry. This was performed also by this early physician Osório Talmaturgo Cesar, that had worked in Sao Paulo in the Juqueri Psychiatric Hospital, and he founded a museum called today the Osório Cesar Museum, that this is the, uh, the picture of the facade of the museum Osório Cesar, that is still there and is still open for visitation for those who are in Sao Paulo. And uh, Osório uh, was a pioneer in corresponding with Sigmund Freud. He was a pioneer in psychoanalysis. He was a pioneer in applying you a Freudian psychology in, in reading uh, the, the works of the patients. This is a very significant clinical movement when he starts applying uh, a psychoanalytical theory from Freud into the uh, works of the patients. And then he indeed produced a huge collection of, of artworks. He involved the most important and more, most famous artists of his time in, in, in the Museum of Osório Cesar in the Juqueri Hospital and was indeed a figure that paved the way for all of us who work with the arts and cultural psychiatry and public health and community psychiatry today in the world, although he is very little known. To be genial, art must be free. So Osório Cesar is a genial uh, researcher and, and he was also an art critic. He was a violin player and he could articulate a whole cultural movement around him uh, involving people and debating the uh, psychology and the psychopathology of art and the mental diseases. And he wrote uh, hundreds and even thousand uh, paper uh, art critics uh, debating the modern mov movement in Brazil and really paved that way. This is the, the cover of his book that was published in 1929 the Artistic Expression of the Alienated, Contribution to the Study of the Symbols of the Art. So it is like Hans Prinzhorn, that just seven years before Osório Cesar have published his work, a modern reading of uh, artistic expression and psychopathology. So this whole tradition stemming from uh, Hans Prinzhorn and the whole modern artist new movement, the Impressionists, the Expressionists, the Cubists, all of that came with the idea that even a, a scratch is a, doc, a psychic document. Even the most elementary uh, expressions can uh, translate psychic information and show the psychological state of people that many times won't have words to express themselves, like the psychotic syndromes, as we, we see them often. And it was precisely in chronic psychosis and, and uh, institutionalized patients with long-term incarceration that Dr. Nise da Silveira, working here in Rio de Janeiro, uh, performed one of the greatest arts 
and science works in Brazilian uh, medicine and uh, universal psychiatry. Uh, Dr. Nisa da Silveira founded today, the which is today, the largest museum for arts and psychiatry, which is the Museum of the Images of the Unconscious, that she started as early as 1946 in the Engenho de Dentro Psychiatric Hospital, which still is a deactivated concentration camp that has witnessed the horrors of modern aggressive psychiatry. Dr. Nise said no to the electroshocks and she started occupational therapy unities where she could develop collaborative work with the patients and artists and she was a, a pioneer, pioneered several fields, zootherapy, uh, the art and uh, Jungian expressive therapy. Dr. Nisa da Silveira had worked with Carl Jung in Zurich for two years and also she was the first woman to be graduated in medicine in Bahia Medical School in 1926 when she wrote a thesis, a medical uh, graduation thesis about criminality in the feminine uh, sector. Uh, she was interested in criminal uh, incarcerated women and she was starting to, to study the psychology of the criminal, the, of the fender women. And, and Dr. Nisi succeeded. She produced a revolution in Brazilian healthcare. She formed hundreds of people. She started uh, solid institutions like the Museum of the Images of the Unconscious that is still active up to today and also the House of Palms, a Casa das Palmeiras. And she influenced generations and she's still influencing. Her uh, major uh, reference, living refer reference that she got the opportunity to uh, meet in, in person was Dr. Carl Jung, which was at the time the greatest living psychiatrist. And she showed him the works of the patients that she had uh, captured uh, in the in the ho in the hospital, those images revealed structured symbols, symbols of, of from mythologies, and 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 it was surprising that uh, poor suburban uh, psychiatric patients from Rio de Janeiro, the third world, could uh, paint the same symbols that uh, Swiss and Americans and other uh, mythologies from the world could also uh, portray. The, those symbols were mandalas, sim uh, circular symbols. She did this working in a colony hospital where I myself have worked for seven years and I'll speak very quickly about what we did. So uh, with the work with Jungian psychology you learn that you have to observe and search for images and symbols and uh, mythological parallels and uh, synchronicities and uh, simultaneities that may have happened uh, between the clinical history of the person and un universal mythology. That's a quite challenging uh, job because you have to have uh, access to uh, mythology research and mythology data databases and, and, and you have to yourself be committed to the constant studying of mythology in order that you may have a repertoire that will fit your clinical uh, challenges when you are working in the community with the families and the patients. What Jung has taught to Nise and I have learned uh, working in the Museum of the Images of the Unconscious, when I arrived, Nise had died for 10 years already, is that you have to fit the myth with the clinical picture, with the clinical presentation. Each patient has a myth, has an archetype. Each patient has a set of archetypes. It's one of the jobs of the psychiatrist, of the Jungian psychiatrist, to find out and make the patient play, express that set of archetypes. And in this, in our work, which is drama therapy, this comes out as, as, as characters, as villains, as heroes. And this has been a constant finding and experience in our work. Uh, 
in my management, I had worked for seven years, the, the patients and artists, like this big patient and artist, wonderful artist, uh, José Alberto Almeida, they would lecture in my place. I would tell, I would ask them to tell their histories and tell their experience in the Museum of the Images of the Unconscious. And, and for instance, this uh, client is a master. He teaches generations of people that go through the Museum of Im Images of the Unconscious. And through the arts, you can reveal the internal world and the internal images and the, the internal hidden emotions that may uh, happen in the interior of your patient, in the interior of your, of your client, of your family, of your community. Those emotions are organized in images, and the images are the conjunction of the emotions. This is Spinoza, Spinoza theory that Nisa da Silveira was truly an Spinozan. So you will see the recurrence of eternal symbols from humanity, from abstract, geometrical, uh, all kinds of, of, of art tendencies and movements up to uh, uh, mythological symbols charged with meaning and uh, mythological uh, parallels that you must help to find and uh, improve the communication level and the level of understanding of yourself and the client and both of you understanding each other. And, and also Nisida da Silveira, she quotes Wassily Kandinsky, which for us is a glorious painter and artist, when he talks about improvisation, all these processes of image formation and configuration happens through improvisation. And this is part of my, my own method. The basis of my theatrical language is improvisation. All of our uh, works and processes happen through an improvised language that we play regularly three times a week in public spaces as soon as we end this pandemia. We are right now in March, in April uh, 2020, and the whole world is experiencing social isolation and quarantine um, due to epidemics of coronavirus. Dr. Nisa da Silveira also met the most important psychiatrist, like Eugene Minkowski, that it was the phenomenology a psychiatry that Nisi also met in Switzerland. And she had the great opportunity to work personally with Jung and have a deeper uh, opportunity to learn the Jungian uh, work and the Jungian uh, multiple uh, and extensive uh, list of works. She founded this museum that is up today open to visitation it's uh, one of certainly one of the most important works in universal psychiatry and it's, it's still working. In the same hospital I started an experience that ended up being known as the Madness Hotel and the Dionysus Theatre Clinic that we are operating uh, for 10 years now with several cases with a lot of documentations of success of mental health promotion. And this is the idea, a cultural action for freedom, like Paulo Freire wrote the book, occupation of public spaces with dialogic and theatrical and poetic, poetic and music and dancing and uh, traditional forms of language, uh, which, is, for instance, you have like the poet Ray Lima, which is in this picture holding the drum, uh, which he talks about sino poetry and this idea that we can occupy the public space. And we also had the opportunity to occupy the hospital, the psychiatric hospital, and, and we produced artworks like this that was performed by the Rio de Janeiro artist Luisa Vidal, that uh, produced this nice uh, intervention in the psychiatric hospital. Uh, another key influence for us is Umberto Maturana and his work on uh, biology of knowledge and language. It's a key influence for us, for our work and the way we work and the way we deal. The José Pacheco uh, uh, educator that is holding the microphone in one of our assemblies uh, that was held during the routine and, and congresses that we performed in the Madness Hotel. 
Uh, we think we are a pedagogy of autonomy, a cultural action for freedom, a pedagogy of the oppressed. We are Brazilians. We, I come from the periphery. I come from the periphery of Rio de Janeiro. And this is Paulo Freire, which seems to be one of the most lucid Brazilians of all, all times. And of course, we are very influenced by Nisa da Silveira. And also she was very influenced by Spinoza. And that's why we work with this idea that madness, yet there is method in it, which is a Shakespearean, a Shakespearean quotation, and that was the moment of uh, explosion of our method in uh, demonstrating consistent clinical results and uh, with, with uh, engagement of actors and patients and communities and families in a continuous work that has been published in BBC in 2015, in the early beginning of 2015. It's nearly showtime, and these thespians are busy warming up ahead of tonight's performance of Hamlet. But these performers aren't professional actors. They are patients at a psychiatric hospital in Rio. Many of the members of this theatre group suffer from mental health conditions, including severe schizophrenia and chronic psychosis. Vita Pordeus is the actor's doctor but is also their director and acts alongside them in the plays. He founded a collective called The Madness Hotel. He believes that this collective provides a way for his patients to explore their emotions and feelings and says his technique cures them. I believe that theatre cures because through the debate of the relationships of the person, we can see the evolution of the person. Mental illness is characterized by isolation. Theatre heals because it expands the consciousness, the emotion, the relationship to the other. Vitor says that the success of his work can be clearly seen and has many anecdotes about dramatic effects that theatre has had on his patients. This patient, she was introduced to me as mute. When this patient was very severe, very regressed, very chronic psychosis, schizophrenia, long-term hospitalization, she enters in the workshop and she catches the microphone and she sings. The troupe is on its way to the beach for a sunset performance in Ipanema. The group comes here regularly to perform. Hamlet is a favorite, as Vito says it openly explores its character's state of mind. Vito says that he believes that theatre can have a curative effect on mental health problems. And the people here performing at this beautiful setting in Rio de Janeiro. So, this is what we've been playing, to be or not to be. And we reach it as something that is really larger than us. I had been invited to Venice. I had been invited to Denmark, to the Elsinore Castle of, of the historical Hamlet. I had been given classes and workshops in, in McGill University in Montreal and, and forming a new generations of cultural psychiatrists where we can uh, develop some sort of preventive psychiatry, a psychiatry that worked the traumas through playing and through performance and through cultural manifestations of the community. Through that we can approach and we can uh, like unlock the bombs and, and unlock the traumatic experiences that people are programmed uh, through historical and transgenerational and familial trauma to uh, perform. So I think this was a very interesting experience like uh, when we saw the incredible performance of patience. Deixo assim fragmentos de mim, mil histórias sem fim, aliás, sem novas nos fins. Tanto faz, tanto faz, tanto fiz as pazes. Que quis todas as fases por um fiz. Meu sonho nas paredes de giz. Meu furor não condiz. Mas acima de tudo. Mas acima de tudo. O negro afolige em minha cor de aprendiz. Deixa assim, deixa assim, deixa assim, fragmentos, 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 minha história sem fim, aliás, sem novas nos finais.
tanto pai, tanto fazem, tanto fiz as pazes, que quis todas as bases por um tris. Eu sonho nas paredes de giz, meu furor não condiz, mas acima de tudo, mas acima de tudo, mas acima de tudo. O negro aflige minha cor de aprendiz Mas acima de tudo O negro aflige minha cor de aprendiz Então nós chegamos né, num lugar de manifestação Nós estamos trabalhando com o pessoal da Dinamarca do, do, do castelo do príncipe Hamlet, lá da Alcinori. Fizemos as, as manchetes, né, como se diz em inglês. We did the headlines, né? we, we were. Uh, so we have been uh, invited to the Denmark, to the, to the castle, and all this is a continuous work and, and, and sign that we are uh, progressing. We did the headlines and, and we keep working exactly the same. We keep working in the same space, in the same kind of singing, the same music, the same... Of course, we keep playing new stuff and new works come, but the language doesn't change. It's the language. The medium is the message. The language is the message. So that's why we have to play. <laughs> Segura se sana com água. Mas o remédio é ternura. Quem tem demais, quem tem. Salsa, cebola e coelho. É festa no engenho de dentro. Actors that has uh, sh shown uh, the, the shining in this story, the best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, scene indivisible, or poem unlimited. The king Reginaldo Rodriguez Terra, 70 year old, abandoned by the family when he was 11 year old. He spent 58 years incarcerated in public psychiatric institutions in Rio de Janeiro. Original from Magalhães Bastos, West Zone of Rio. Engaged in Dionysus Theater in 2009 and demonstrated significant behavioral change with constant participation and even trips to perform in other states. In 2016, he was moved to a community in a therapeutic residence and still participates in the theater sessions. In this movie, he plays the Reginaldo ghost of Rodrigues. with the exact lines yeah. of Shakespeare. Yeah. 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 
phenomena, important psychic phenomena, that a chronic psychotic patient with 58 years of incarceration gets out of the, the chronic psychotic state through playing the ghost of King Hamlet in a documented manner. It's not, a, it's, it's not invented. And this is one of the, his latest pictures that we did just uh, the, the, the beginning of this year. Another key figure and actor, bri brilliant in our group, in our collective, was Jacio Oliveira de Little Pelé because he managed to get out from the street. He was formerly a homeless person. He lived 10 years in the street and uh, since three years now he is living in his own uh, rented uh, small apartment in the suburb of Rio. And he's a continuous artist and composer and singer in our work. Another uh, key actress that uh, surprised us all with her exceptional performance was Miriam Rodriguez Galvan that she's been following by me for eight years now and at the maximum of her evolution she uh, dropped, she washed out antipsychotic medication significant antipsychotic medication and she engaged in the theater and then after she went back to school and she uh, passed it from one year to the other and I spoke to the teachers and she, she, she's learning, she's really learning. And then we uh, followed this remarkable evolution that she's still sustaining. She's not studying anymore, uh, but she uh, sustains autonomy. And this was a very clear demonstration that the autonomy that you gain, you don't lose anymore. Um, this is Lenira, Lenira de Sena. She uh, is a remarkable case of, of healing uh, in the scenario of acute first episode psychosis, 58, 57 at the time, uh, a year old, uh, seamstress and, and housemaid, and she got extremely uh, agitated, psych psycho motor agitation, and she tried to knife the neighbors. The family hospitalized her, that where she stood with uh, two, for two weeks, she got out medicated with risperidone and valproic acid uh, that I maintained. They hired me on, on the moment when she was being uh, uh, discharged from the hospital. And I followed her, uh, I'm following her in the last year. And uh, she maintained the medication for another 16 weeks. And uh, she asked me to remove, I, authorized uh, the slow uh, down titration of the doses and she improved and she's sustaining up to now and we keep playing although now in the quarantine we are not playing because uh, all public spaces are forbidden but as soon as we go back I uh, hope we will resume the playing and keep the follow-up for uh, some months more until we can uh, uh, consider the psychosis healed, the first episode psychosis healed. And I evaluate my clients and my actors through uh, theatrical parameters, because I believe that theatrical parameters are uh, like x-rays into the psychological process. So to the presence, the engagement, the singing, dancing, gesture, contribution and involvement, the collective actions, the character playing, the poetry declamation, the general statues, reports and statements, pictures, movies, all of that are psychic documents in our theater clinic. And we can plot the evolution of all the people that we are uh, properly seeing and doing an amnesis and this closes the first year of work that sets a general pattern that we are working. 24% of the patients had engaged in a positive therapeutic process. 76% of the of the same patients and, and their families uh, have not 
engaged. They have uh, behaved in a conservative of even worsening pattern of uh, ev clinical evolution. What I found the most interesting is that through the, the, the theatrical follow-up, we can see and uh, see how each person is going to behave and how each person uh, will show their true intentions through their actions. And this is a very important issue in psychiatry, where there is so much confusion from parts of the diseases that we see and work. Uh, in the clinical uh, setting, I had worked a lot. We have seen uh, one case of feminicide in our community here in Rio, uh, one case of appendicitis, two suicide attempts, transient ischemic attack, syncope, burnout syndromes, severe psychological competition, severe neurotic syndromes and personality disorders, systematic attacks on, the, on our project, which is a mental health project of promotion of mental health, but we suffered many uh, traps in the community, in the, in the working in the community. Uh, we had beautiful evolutions in our chronic, psychotic, and schizophrenic patients that we have been following since the Madness Hotel. Uh, and also uh, in, in the beautiful case of homelessness and, and psychotic, psychosocial disorder associated to homeless. And we had this beautiful case in, 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 in healing, a first episode of psychosis. And that is a, a very, very significant uh, sign that we may be applying correctly the principles of Dr. Nisa da Silveira, Dr. Jung, and, and other authors that are important in the field of transcultural psychiatry and therapy. And this incredible work that we had in Jamaica, that was, that's why I'm recording this movie, uh, was a beautiful confirmation of what we are doing and how we are uh, di dialoguing with our masters and the, and the current leaders of our field of social and transcultural psychiatry in the world. Well, through these uh, 114 patients in the first year of follow-up, we ended up uh, seeing uh, more than 20 communities. They come from different 20 communities of a huge city uh, called Rio de Janeiro with 7 million people population. Uh, in a Jungian reading, we had also mapped uh, key archetypes that we found in the clinical uh, syndromes, psychiatric clinical syndromes. Gold fever, fetish for money, sex works, sex wars, the masculine against the feminine, ego syndromes, and so on. We keep working in an engaged group, engaged community, a group of families, that join together, and we also have been training clinical psychologists and arts students and people, uh, post-graduation students, in drama therapy and community therapy and popular education uh, processes. And this is a team of work that we have been with Tiago Beck, Natalie Cristino, Fabiane Valmore, Jaci Oliveira, and Eric Rodriguez on the left. This is always this is published in my book that I published in Canada in 2018. It's also available in the internet. We are the popular university for art and science, the People's University for Art and Science from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And the last message is this quotation from Victor Turner that in order quote, quotes William Blake and he says, in both major senses, doing deeds and performing, it is indispensable to mental health. As William Blake said, he who nourishes desires but acts not breeds pestilence. So thank you very much. And we keep playing and working and we wait for the end of the quarantine to resume our mental health promotion works and public works here in Rio de Janeiro because we keep following people through the phone and through internet and many, many intercurrences. Thank you very much and uh, uh, please subscribe to the channel and share our videos. Thank you.